Hi guys, my name is Courtney. I write under the pen name is Lyra Parrish and I'm one half of the USA Today best-selling duo Kennedy Fox. And today we're gonna watch my 2021 goal video. It's gonna be a reaction because I have no idea what the goals that I set for 2021 and I'm predicting that I didn't meet any of them, but I thought it would be fun for us to kind of watch this baby together and do a live reaction. So without further ado, let me open up this tab. I really hate listening to myself talk. So this is probably going to be a real gem. My keyboard is dead so probably should have prepared a little better but you know me oh real quick before we get started i just want to say thank you so much margaret for sending me this very kind letter i really appreciate it you guys know that i love receiving notes in the mail like for real when people give me gifts like if they just write me a handwritten letter like i don't need anything else like the letter typically does it for me because it just means so much to me if you would like to send me letters my p.o box is down below in the description i read them i have a board where i post every single letter that people have given me words of encouragement like just I, I really really appreciate it so thank you this was great and it meant a whole lot to me without further ado come on keyboard connect you know that you can do this we're gonna go to my channel we're gonna watch this <sighs> the nerves I have because it just feels like such a lifetime ago, you know? If you notice I'm wearing the same clothes as my Q&A Monday, it's because it's literally the same day, so. Okay, so let's do this. Hi guys, my name is Courtney. I write under the pen names Lyra Parrish and I'm one half of the USA Today best-selling duo Kennedy Fox. It's 2021 <laughs> and let me tell you, I've had a lot of people message me on Instagram and on Facebook and in just on social media in general and ask me where I've been. They wanted to check on me because typically when I drop off the face of the earth, it's because something's gone wrong. It typically has to do with my dad. This was all me this time. I've been really sick basically the first three weeks of the year with the thing that shall not be named. It was rough. COVID, like I completely forgot that happened in 2021. This year has been <laughs> crazy. Antibodies built up. My dad did not get it. My mother didn't get it. It was just me and the hubs basically. We just took care of each other the best we could. Ran a lot of fever, coughs, the whole nine yards. Every single symptom we pretty much had. We are on the mend life is getting back to normal. As you all know, I believe 2020 was a dumpster fire. I survived it. I had some really positive things that happened to me, but I had some really negative things that happened in my personal life. If you're interested in that video, it's posted, it's up. I will leave a link for you up above in the cards and down below. But it seems as if the dumpster fire of 2020 just bled over <laughs> into 2021 for me. I'm gonna consider my new year starting on February 1st. I am currently behind with pretty much life and I really hope 2022 is not like this guys because that was rough and I am still trying to catch up and to come and give you my 2021 goals a little bit late but hey better late than never right without further ado let's go ahead and get started with this video I wrote down 10 things that I feel are really important for me in 2021. One of the big goals is to get ahead with writing. I know that I said that all through 2020. Spoiler alert, it didn't happen. We wrote deadline to deadline like the entire year. I'm not even kidding. This year so far has not been that amazing for getting ahead. The year has just begun and so if we can get two books ahead the dumpster fire continued all throughout 2021. Then we can accomplish other goals. It's gonna take a lot of dedication. It's gonna take a lot of focus. Take us actually sticking to our writing deadlines and our editing deadline. It's not gonna be an easy task, but I think once we get no ahead, kidding. it will be easier to stay caught up. So then if something in the future happens, then it's not that big of a deal. I didn't really work for an entire seven days. I was working at the beginning and then towards the end of my symptoms, but for about seven days, I was out of commission. And seven days can put you behind a lot when you are writing deadline to deadline. That was motivation for me to really put that down in stone that that is one of the goals that I want to accomplish. I've got to 
writing partner so it's gonna take Brooke doing the same thing but we're on the same page when it comes to that. I want to be two books ahead but if we were only ahead by one that would be a win for me and I would consider it still successful. I wish we were ahead by one book right now. I wish. Past Courtney. What were you thinking? No didn't happen. But I think two would give us the cushion that we need in case something happens. Number two is to release audiobooks with ebooks. I know that you tend to do better when you release the ebooks and paperbacks and audio all at the same time. Didn't happen either. That's two goals out of ten. Didn't happen. I can say that we release them very soon afterward, like within two weeks for several of them, but releasing them together just... We weren't ever ahead, so we couldn't do that. All at the same time, but that's gonna take us getting ahead because narrators need time to record it, edit it, master it, and then we have to upload it. We typically have to wait for ACX, and right now they've been super behind if we were two books ahead. I can say though that ACX has gotten their crap together in 2021 because when I upload a book, like it, they say it can take up to 10 days. And uh, there was a point where it was taking like 30, 45 days. But now like, even we're shocked when the books go live. Like we've had a book go live like in as little as seven days. So good job ACX for getting your crap together in 2021. Two books ahead, then we would be able to get our audios ready to go, get a pre-order set up for those audiobooks as well with our eBooks. So then when we're doing ads or we're pushing it out, we can be like, hey guys, you can pre-order it in eBook and hardcover and an audiobook. And I think that would be very beneficial, but obviously that cannot happen unless the number one goal happens, which is to get ahead. The third thing on the list is for us to really dive in with foreign translations. I can tell you as of right now, we are in the process of doing that. I've found an amazing Italian translator who has started translating one of our series. She knows that basically if she can keep up with us, she's got a job for the next few years. We are also going to move into French and to German. That is on the list. I can say that we did do our foreign translations. We have an entire series that is translated at this point. We'll start releasing a book per month in Italian starting in January. So I'm really super excited about that. And our translator and our proofer is really great. We have reviewers now for Italian books, which I am super excited about. And I really can't wait to see how it all works out for 2022. Um, she's actually starting on a second series now we did not move into French and German because we have publishers there, so it's a little... There's some red tape we have to work around, um, but we did go hardcore in foreign translations, and uh, I've kept up with that all year in 2021 and just kept them on a schedule, and they've met every single deadline, which I love about them of things to do, but I don't know if we'll be able to get all of this stuff translated in 2021. I think that it'll be something that's kind of ongoing until we're caught up with our backlist because we have 30 books that we've published at this point. And so it's going to take a little time to have them all translated and to be able... Yeah, so just to give you all like a timeline, it's taking about two months for us to get one book translated and edited by someone who speaks the language. And our editor in Italian goes through the English and the Italian version and makes sure that it was properly uh, translated and fixes errors inside of the document. So, and to be able to move forward. Eventually, I would like it where we were getting our translations done while the audiobooks were being recorded. So, that's still a goal. I would absolutely love for us to be able to release all of our our new books in all of the languages, um, but that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna take getting ahead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so then we can just release all the languages, all the audiobooks, all of that all at once. Then that again goes back to getting ahead of schedule. The next goal, which is a big one, is for Kennedy Fox to make over a million dollars in 2021 from January 1 to December 31st. Didn't happen. We were close but we did not hit the seven figure mark in 2021. Overall, like for the the years, like if you add up all of our income, yeah, we're well over a couple million, but we want to hit that seven figure mark in a 365 day period. And 2021 was not the year, but we did make more money in 2021 than we did in 2020. I mean, it was our largest year 
in the history of Kennedy Fox, and I think next year we'll be able to do that, especially with our foreign translations and stuff. We have a lot of things going on right now. Our release schedule is packed. We packed. We did eight books in 2021. It was so packed. I'm gonna do a wrap-up video of the year so you guys know, but the things that we accomplished, my mind is blown. Audiobooks, we've got the foreign translations going. I think that it is a realistic goal for us to be able to do that, but even if we didn't make a million and we made 750,000, I would still consider that a huge plus. You Okay, so I still consider it a huge plus. I said if we made 750,000 and not a million, I would be happy. So yeah, uh, we did that. And I'm so proud of us and the fact that we can work really hard and make money and live comfortably by our art and our words. I'm so grateful that this is my life because timing was everything. You guys know that always want to be growing your business and you always want to do better than you did the previous year with writing and release. Absolutely. You always want to grow your business. You always want to make more money than you previously made. And if you're consistently releasing, that should happen. If you're consistently releasing and you make less money than you did the year before, then there's a major issue with your business leasing and self-publishing there are peaks and valleys and you can have really great years and you can have okay years and so the goal for us is to always climb and I think that is our next number that we are leading for if for some reason we don't make that goal I know that we're trying for it we may be very close and then that will just roll over to next year's I was like Court Stradamus, like I freaking knew. To next year's goal. And we're just gonna continue to push, keep our expenses down to the 15 to 20% mark. And I can say that our expenses are between the 20 and 25% mark, which is amazing. I know some authors spend half of their money and they put it back into their business and we're very smart with that. So I don't have a final number yet because the year hasn't ended and we still have expenses we'll be paying. Or use all the different avenues that we have available to reach new readers because Guys, you know, as authors, that's always the goal. You reach new readers, you have a huge backlist, they love this series, they'll go read all of your other <laughs> books too. Think about a consumer or a reader. You don't just think about selling them one book, you think about selling them all of your books. And that, man, past Courtney was on point. That's why branding is important. <laughs> I think it's doable and I'm really excited to see where we stand at the end of the year, which of course I'm gonna tell you all about it. Another goal that I have is to go all in with dictation where I am dictating at least 90% of the books that I am writing. I talked about this kind of, didn't happen. Eh. <laughs> writing. I talked about this kind of when I was live sprinting with Brooke Passmore over on her channel and dictation can change. Hey Brooke, I miss you. I miss, I miss you Brooke. I just, I wanted to say that. I love Brooke Passmore. I know that she's doing her cover thing, but she'll always hold a special place in my heart and she's getting really good at designing covers, so. And change your life. I just dictated 90% of a book. I wrote one chapter out of the chapters that I needed to write. I found it to be kind of weird at first, but I actually really liked it. And I think that if I continue to practice and continue to hone my skills, it will allow me to be a faster writer so that I can jump into edits quicker because that's what takes me the longest time. With edits still take me forever. I'm not sure I understand. Shut up, Siri. Oh my gosh. Um, edits still take me forever. I might need to roll this goal over for 2022 because it's a good goal to have. Like, you never know if you're going to break an arm or a wrist or have surgery because you have carpal tunnel or whatever the case is. So it's a good goal to have. Also, can we just talk about, like, how sloppy I look right now? Like, what is going on with the hair? Must have been a humid day because that thing is frizzy. And uh, I just, I watch this and I just kind of breaks my heart a little. With dictation, I feel like outlining is absolutely necessary, but there are some pansters that use it too. I just don't think for me that that would personally work. But yeah, dictation. I feel like it's gonna change my life. Next up <laughs> is for me to find a literary agent for Lyra Parrish. I've talked about this several times in the past, and essentially I unpublished my... Failed. Failed. Like, I did not have the time in 2021 to work on 
anything of mine at all. It just didn't happen. I had published my backlist in the middle of 2020. I will put a video up in the cards if you want to watch that. It was a sad moment. I, at that point in my life, thought that I wanted to rewrite those books. After I went through them, I realized that it would probably be easier to just write whole new books because the writer that Courtney was still true. But I can tell you that Radish does want me to put my work on their website. And since I have eight books that are just chilling, I might do some edits on them and just put them on Radish how they are. 2014 through 2015, Courtney just was repetitive. My books just weren't great. And I know that people have made comments about how my first books suck. Like, girl, I know. I know they do. Like, if you're gonna judge me, judge me on, like, my latest releases. And even if you're, like, judging me, like, I don't care because I have readers who love it. So that's the thing with being an author tuber. Other authors like to read other author tubers books to talk about how much they suck, but I don't care. So... Courtney was in 2013 is not the writer that Courtney is today in 2021. My goal is Courtney in 2021 is not the writer that Courtney is today going into 2022 because you're always improving on your craft. And my goal is to write a contemporary romance, a standalone, and then start pitching to agents by the end of 2021. I want to make sure that I have time to make it good. I'm giving myself like 11 months to write and finish a book, which I feel still felt. So like it's plenty enough time. Even if I wrote two chapters per month, then I would be on schedule to making that goal. It's just something I think it's hilarious that past me thought that I would be able to write two chapters per month with the Kennedy Fox schedule and how sick my dad was. Like, that's hilarious. It's just something that I really want to do. I have these social media platforms that I use. Of course, everybody knows that Lyra Parrish is half of Kennedy Fox, and I don't want to self-publish under my name. I feel like if I moved this brand to traditionally publishing, it would allow me to work on passion projects that maybe don't really fit with Kennedy Fox. I've I still believe that, um, 100%. Like, I would love to transition Lyra Parrish to a traditionally published name because the platform's already there. I think that it would do well, you know, but it's going to take time and it's not going to be anything that happens, like, overnight. I want to make sure that what I'm pitching is something that is not something that we would write under Kennedy Fox because I'd rather me and Brooke's audience get that stuff that really means something to me because, you know, I feel like as a self-published author, our readers know us better because we're so out there and open. I also have a thriller in mind that I would love to write to about like a psycho husband because I love psychological thrillers. I've talked about how I want to write thrillers. Like I really love that genre. I've been reading a lot of- <laughs> So nothing's changed. I've been reading a lot of books oh that God. are thrillers. Not to say that that wouldn't work under Kennedy Fox. It's just out of brand. We have a very specific thing that our readers expect and some of the books that True. I want to write don't fit into that mold. But the first goal True. is to write the contemporary romance, find an agent. I've started outlining the book but that's as far as I've gotten. I think I have like the first three chapters outlined and that's about it. And so I'm and it stayed like that. I don't even know if I still have my Scrivener project because I switched laptops and not all of my stuff was like synced in my Dropbox. So I'm basically starting completely over. And so I'm going to outline first, then I'm going to write the first draft. I'm going to let it sit, and then I'm going to go through and do my really hard edits. And then I'm going to use paid beta readers. I am exchanging money for their time and honest opinion. I'm going to make those changes, and then I'm going to send it to edits. I know that you don't have to do that, but I'm going to send it to an editor to make sure that it is in tip-top shape because I want to wow agents. I want them to sign me. I don't want to be in the query trenches for a long time. I know that I don't really have control over that, but if, if I give them a finalized project that I would self-publish tomorrow, I think that it would be at the quality needed to impress someone. I think I'm going to do traditional publishing vlogs. I think that, you know, if I vlogged this entire experience of like plotting the book and writing the book and doing the betas and the critique partners and then doing the edits and then sending it to agents and just bringing all through that whole process that it would be a lot of fun. I don't have a whole lot of experience with that. I do have experience with 
our agent and like signing contracts and things of that nature, but not this part of it. So I think that would be fun. Let me know down below in the comments if you agree. Of course, I'm going to take you all along on that journey with me and plan on doing some like vlogs where I'm outlining and doing different things like that. I have not watched this video since I edited it a year ago. So forgive me, but it's kind of all dependent on my Kennedy Fox schedule because 100% that always will come first. Still, Kennedy Fox schedule will always come first, even over YouTube, over everything. First. Next ones are kind of personal. I want to read 25 books. Last year, failed, failed, er, sucked. I think I got 12 books read, and that's including audiobooks as well. When I think I got about 12 books read this year too. As well, when I drive to my mom's house and back, it's usually about a 30 to 35 minute drive, unless I get stuck in traffic, which it can be a little longer. So I like to listen to audiobooks while I'm driving around, and I listen to them in one and a half speed because people talk way too slow for me. That's my ADHD. They just talk too slow. I need everything to be fast, fast, fast. That's mostly how I got my books in last year. And so this year, I'm like, I can double that. I think 25 books is realistic. I got, I was wrong. Behind on my book of the month <laughs> subscription and my to read still behind on my book of the month subscription. Yeah. To read list right now is so long. I thought that I would stay caught up in 2020, but that didn't happen. But hey, new year, new me, new books, right? Another goal is to take a real vacation where I don't bring my laptop. Oh, okay. So this is like the only goal that I actually accomplished. I'm so excited right now. Like not at all. Like it stays home. It does not come with me. I do not have it. I will not be working. I'm okay. I lied. I did bring my laptop, but I wasn't on it for 10 days. I'm going to enjoy myself, hopefully decompress and get rid of all this added stress that I have in my life. Last year I did that. It was closed 90% of the time, unless we were on the road traveling, because y'all know that we drove to Yellowstone to go and camp. But that trip same thing happened in 2021 was interrupted and the first but our trip was not interrupted uh we built out a van this summer and will and i drove the van to yellowstone and it was the best trip of my life i needed it so bad i was able to decompress and be with nature and like kind of work through my grief and like just you know be just be and it was incredible. Half of it was amazing. It was like the best trip of my life. The last half of it was an absolute nightmare because we went during hurricane season because that in 2022, we're going to Yellowstone in July. So a hurricane season evacuation from Yellowstone will not happen in 2022. That's just how me and Will's birthday and anniversary falls. I want to plan an actual vacation this year as long as there are no restrictions. This vaccine has been out. I don't want to get COVID again. And it's of course all dependent on the amen sis. And I didn't get it again. I just got boosted. So I'm boosted baby. That, but I would like to just go somewhere that's beautiful with scenery. I've talked about Napa Valley before. Of course, I have another Yellowstone trip planned in August. Crossing my fingers, a hurricane doesn't come and ruin that one. I just want to be able to unplug and not be working all the time. I'm always on my phone. I'm always on my laptop. And I just want to be able to just cut it all off. Sit out at the Madison River in Yellowstone and read a book all day. Because I did that. And it was amazing. Highly recommend, guys, if you ever get the chance to do that. Yeah, so I'm going to play plan that. Those same geese were there in 2021. Like I was so happy to see that probably sometime toward the end of the year. You'll know I take a lot of camping vacations, but I use them as workcations. And so I'm actually working in writing or editing or whatever the case is when I, I took a lot of workcations uh, in 2021. I went to some rocket launches at the beginning of the year. And then we camped in August, October, and November. So I was very grateful for those trips when I typically go camping. I don't know if it'll happen. Maybe, maybe not, but it is a goal. Next thing is for me to post 50 videos on YouTube and to hit 10,000 subscribers. I'm gonna try. Didn't happen. Did not happen. I'm gonna try. I know that there will be some weeks where I post more videos and other weeks when I post less. I am currently behind on my schedule. Where that I have overpromised and what else is new? Let's see how many videos I actually posted. 36. And this video right here will be 38. So no, I failed. And my subscriber count as of right now is 7,446. So as far as subscriber count, I failed again.
<laughs> and under delivered and I don't like that and so I want to get back onto my regular schedule I will post 50 videos in 2021 you know I can't help the subscribe bold face lie but I could not predict what was going to happen to me guys like I I could have never predicted that so subscriber thing that's people make that choice on their own I can't force anybody to subscribe to my channel but I hope that the things that you should subscribe now if you haven't because 2022 is going to be amazing I am sharing and my personality of course makes you guys want to subscribe if I don't hit it we won't cry over spilt milk I'm happy with however many subscribers I have it's just a low-key goal to piggyback on that one a low-key goal that didn't happen <laughs> I would like to make 15,000 subscribers on Instagram. It's really did not happen. My Instagram count right now. <laughs> this video is just like death, doom, and destruction. Jesus. My subscriber count is 10.8K. Gained like 800 subscribers in 2021. Wow. It's really slow going. I dropped off the face of the earth. My last post was January 1st, I believe. So there's going to be some work that I have to do there to continue to grow that. But yeah, I think, and I did not do the work to continue that. So I think that it's possible it's just going to take some work on my end and me scheduling posts and just staying on top of it and being active on social media. Another, I knew what I needed to do and your girl didn't do it. Your low-key goal is for me to make 10,000 subscribers on TikTok right now. Didn't happen either. Miracles have happened, but I have 9,881 subscribers. So I'm like 120 subscribers from making 10K, but I didn't. I didn't make it. I think I have 7,500. I think it's possible. Like, so I gained what? 7,500 to 9,800. What is that? 75, 85, 95, like 2,200 subscribers. So at least it increased. It wasn't like Instagram, which was a total failure. Well, like I'm pretty sure I just need like one video to hit off and I'll hit over 10,000, but it's slow growth for me over there as well. So I think 10,000 is realistic, but I've dropped off the face of the earth on TikTok too. I did drop off. I did drop off of TikTok throughout the year because TikTok really frustrates me. I can spend a lot of time on videos and they just don't go anywhere. And then the ones that I'm like, F TikTok, you know, I'm just going to post whatever I want. They like take off, but I, I just, I don't understand it. You never know what's going to go viral on TikTok. Last but not least, my final thing that I'm going to focus on in 2021 is to cut toxic things out of my life. That includes, I did that. I did that probably why I'm so happy right now but Please we'll continue people. behaviors and mindsets and it's something that I kind of focused on in 2020 I have a saying that Will's always like oh yeah Courtney she's bless and release that's just that's just how she is bless and release I am not even kidding for real just bless and release and I want to continue that forward there are people in my life who just don't bring me happiness and continually are negative and bring me down and like I have to question myself why this person is in my life. But mainly family. I'm just going to be honest. Like I have just cut off so many family members, especially after my dad passed away because just I don't need that in my life at all. And blood doesn't mean that I have to deal with you, especially when you're super toxic. So Bless and release. They're gone. Also toxic behaviors. And that's more on myself and, you know, my personal journey with my fitness level and trying to get healthy and dieting. And Oh, man. My own toxic behavior and dieting and all of that. I realize that I do have toxic mentalities when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to be kinder to myself because I don't need to be my own worst enemy. All about those positive affirmations. But I do not believe in toxic positivity either. I don't want people that are yes men in my life. I need people in my life who are willing to tell me the truth. Who And I have people in my life who will tell me the truth. I don't want yes men. I don't want people who just agree with me because... They don't want to hear it from me. Um, I have zero friends in my life who are yes men. Zero. All of my friends know that I'm pretty blunt and they can be the same way with me. I would rather the truth, although it hurts, than to be told a lie and be led astray, especially when it comes to my own behaviors. But yeah, with the toxic mentality things, I don't think that I really worked through my weight loss stuff. You guys know that my nephrologist told me that I needed to lose 20 pounds before I saw him again in May. And my blood work wasn't super great, but he believes that, you know, it was my medication that was doing it. I was working out a whole lot there for a little while before my dad passed away. And um, just, 
you know, losing him and having to do all that stuff, I just dropped off. I'm going to be honest. And I haven't completely gone back to it yet, but I'm going to because I feel better when I exercise. I lost my eye watch in 2021. This eye watch that you're seeing here is a new one because I lost my other one. I've lost so many things because of ADHD that I'm just like, you know, that was a big one for me. Losing that eye watch was a wake up call that I have a problem. I've also lost three keys to my car. Yes, I have four keys to my car because I, I had two that I bought it with and I lost one. And so when I went and got uh, spares made of my key, which was really expensive because it's one of those keyless touch keys, I ended up getting two done because it was a little cheaper to just have them activate two. So I had three and then I found the key that I lost two years later. And so then I had four and I just recently lost three of those keys. So I only have one key to my car again. So yeah, I don't know what the point of that was. I guess it's just to say that, you know, I'm always going to have issues when it comes to my weight. You guys know that I've lost a hundred pounds since 2017. I can show you photos of, I call her big girl Courtney. <laughs> and when my dad got sick, I gained 10 pounds. And then when my dad passed away, I gained 10 pounds. And so I gained 20 pounds. My nephrologist noticed and nicely called me out and told me that I needed to lose that 20 pounds. So um, I'm here to say that I've lost 10 pounds. So I only have 10 more pounds to lose, but I'm going to try to get to my goal weight in 2022 but that's a whole other video. So who are straight shooters who are not going to be S me, who don't want to be my friend just because I am half of Kennedy Fox. Like I just don't amen. And I cut those people off real quick because I can see right through it. Need that in my life. I want real relationships with real people because that's how I am. That's the goal in 2021. All the toxic things, I am going to bless and release you. And I am not going to apologize about it. I'm gonna happily do it because I can say that I did take care of my mental health in 2021. Was diagnosed with ADHD. I got that taken care of. I've done a lot of blood work for my PCP to make sure I'm still on track with that. I saw my nephrologist. I've been going to my dentist appointments. Like the last half of the year, um, my dad passing away was a wake up call that I need to take better care of myself. And so I've really been focusing on that the last 90 days, I guess. And I feel a lot better. I feel like myself again. I feel like I look like myself. Like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I look at old Courtney and I'm like, I know that I was going through it and I had no idea what was to come. Like, I don't know. Just, it's hard to watch because it will make me a happier person in the long run. And my mental health is more important than anybody's feelings. I mean, let's just be honest about it. True, my mental health is more important than anybody's feelings. I can say in 2021, I didn't go hardcore with cutting people off, but I can tell you that I did cut people off and William cut people off too, because it's just not worth it. Life is too short to deal with people who are narcissists, who like to manipulate you, who, you know, just intimidate you. Like there are people in my personal life that are like that. And some of those people are family members and I just, I don't have time for it anymore. My dad knew that he raised a bad bee. We used to joke about it. And I think that he would expect me to act that way because at the end of the day, I have to protect myself. You know, I'm all I have. My mental health and my stability and the way that I feel about myself and about life, like that's all very important to me. And I'm glad that Courtney in 2021 decided to take care of that stuff about it. That is my list of my top 10 things that I want to accomplish in 2021. I know this video is late. I know there have been a lot of people posting videos like this and y'all will probably be like, I don't want to watch another one of these. And I totally understand that videos like this are not for some people. That's you, your time. Do what makes you happy, right? But anyway, amen, amen. Still do what makes you happy. Like seriously do it makes you happy. That's all I have for today. I hope that y'all have an amazing, incredible week. You accomplish all your goals and you read stay all the words. well in 2021. <laughs> if you have any questions, as always, leave them below. There's the ballerina. And if not, I'll see you again.
Okay, guys, so that was a little rough to watch for me. I guess the point of this is to say that you can set amazing goals for yourself in whatever year, and you can strive to make those goals, but if you don't, it's not the end of the world, because as you can see, like, what, 90% of my goals I didn't make. Like, it just didn't happen, but I feel better. I have a clear path now of the things that I need to do in my life to accomplish these goals. And I'm not trying to be hard on myself. Like I know that I lost my dad and that was really, really hard for me. Like one of the hardest things I've ever gone through in my life. And while I still deal with grief and my mother triggering me a whole lot, like you guys don't even understand. Like she knows exactly how to push my buttons and what to say. I've learned how to work through it. I've learned how to manage it a lot better. And I think that that comes with time. It comes with perspective. I'm proof that you can have a really shitty year. That you can feel like you're just completely losing it. But like a phoenix, you can rise through the ashes too. You know, I hate that my dad passed away. It's something that I think about every single day, but I know deep down in my heart that my dad was not happy. He was suffering. It brings me some comfort that that's no longer the case, that he's not in a bunch of pain, and I miss him every single day, and I keep going for him. I keep pushing for my dad. I keep writing for my dad. I know that I'm never going to quit this. I'm never going to be like, oh, well, I've had a rough year. Like, this is time to give it up. Like, I do it to keep my dad proud. Eventually, I'm going to release a video talking about my 2022 goals, and I'm going to try to be more realistic. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know. But anyway, I just wanted to go through this video with you guys and prove to you that you can not meet any of your goals. You can fail at all of them and still have a very successful year, still take care of yourself, still, you know, suffer and be upset and, you know, go from hell and back all in the same year and come up from the other side. Like, I'm proof that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And while I'm not like, oh yeah, like everything's perfect and great, you know, I'm still working through a lot of stuff, but I feel like 2022 is just going to be so much better. And I'm really looking forward to a new year and a, a new me and new books and all the things that we're going to accomplish. And I'm super excited about that. So if you liked this type of video, let me know. Next up, we're going to read all the horrible things said about me on Guru Gossiper. I'm just kidding. I don't go there, guys. Like, Everyone on YouTube who's ever talked to me knows I just, I don't. I don't read bad reviews and I'm not going to go to Guru Gossiper and read what's said. I can, I can just imagine. That was a joke. It's not happening. So I hope that you guys have a happy and safe New Year's Eve and I am really looking forward to the new year and to put a bunch of stuff behind me. I just feel really excited about the future and it's something that I really haven't felt in a long time. I hope that we can kick 2022's ass together. I hope that you have an amazing, incredible week. You accomplish all your goals and you write all the words and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye guys.